Hi, I'm Jeremy Young from Atomus, and I'm here to show you the new Ninja 2. Basically, we have HDMI in and HDMI out. We added HDMI out to this, to this product, and we also inc increased the resolution of the screen. And we've added focus peaking in our new Atom OS 3.0, focus peaking, zebra, and false color, as well as blue only for exposure settings. I just want to take you through exactly what this setup is. We have the Nikon D800 here, which is a, a phenomenal lens and sensor combination, and we've worked with Nikon to get a clean output um, in both 24p, 25p, and 30p directly from the sensor. The Atomus user, all they need to do is buy a hard disk. This is a, a 750 gig Hitachi drive, or you can use SSDs. We have a, a long list of recommended drives that you can use. And they basically take, take that disk and they put it into the side of the Ninja, exactly like so. So this is the Ninja 2. This is a touchscreen interface. You can record, play, monitor, and adjust functions from here. We have a HDMI input that comes directly from the sensor of the camera. We have the HDMI output to play out to a big screen monitor. We have line level audio in from a mixing desk, and we have audio out to headphones for monitoring. We have the hard disk, which you insert into the caddy, and the caddy is inserted into the Ninja. On the back, we have the latches for the battery. We have two batteries and a continuous power system. One battery flicks to another. We have latches on each side. You get three to five hours out of each battery. On the other side, we have the latch for the hard disk, and we have the on-off button. That's the physical functions of the Ninja. If I then take my output from the D800, so I've got my mini HDMI here, and I'm plugging straight in to the D800, I insert the HDMI from the camera into the Ninja. I'm going to hit the D800 live mode, which gives us live preview. The Ninja indicates which format is coming in to the Ninja from the camera. We're in 1080p 25. We can also be in 24 or 30. We then have the ProRes HQ, or the codec that we're recording to. We have three different codecs. We also have the battery functionality, which indicates the level of the battery. And we can also switch from one battery to another and remove the battery even while recording. We then have the hard disk, which shows you which hard disk. You can format the hard disk from here. You can also export the XML to Final Cut as your editing project. This shows you the time of recording. So the time of recording is calculated from the input, the format, and the size of the hard disk. If I change the format recording, then the time goes up. Lower quality recording gives us more time. This is the naming of the Ninja and the drive. I can go in here and adjust the name to whatever I like and that will format the hard disk in that name. So I'll know if I have camera one, camera two, Ninja two Jeremy, Ninja two Robbie. I then have the audio functions. If I touch on the audio, I can monitor the audio from the headphones out and decide to record that audio or not. If I had analog audio, I could do the same on the analog and I could adjust the gain up and down. This is the line out level volume, which shows where I am on the volume for the output to the headphones. This is time code. I can have camera trigger from which camera? Sony, Canon, Arri, or no trigger. The Nikon does not have a trigger, so I can't trigger. If I was, for example, on an Arri camera and I change this to HDMI source and I come back out, I can trigger the camera and the Ninja or at the same time. So I only have to hit trigger on the camera, hit record on the camera and it will trigger the Ninja at the same time. As I don't have trigger here, I'm going to use time of day time code. I also have record run time code, which is continuous and I have auto restart. Time of day. Here are my main menu functions. I have record, play, monitor, and menu. Record. 
You can record from the main screen. I'm recording. You can start and stop record from here. Or we can record from the front screen. I can also start and stop from a combination of the monitor page or the main page. Monitoring. Here's where I set up my shot. Focus peaking. My white balance. Up and down. And I can see that my shot is ready for record. I hit record. I can see my level meters for audio, my time code ticking over. If I want to remove the overlay, I just touch anywhere that there is not an icon. If I would like to give the, a marker for the editor, I can simply hit favorite on and off and that will give a small marker. If I'd like to record a longer part of the clip, when I touch the favorite, that's the in point, as it continues to record, when I touch the favorite again, that's the out point. Now I'd like to play back both on the screen and out of the HDMI to a large monitor. The last take I did. This is the last take. I can scrub through. You can see here that I, that's the favorite that I already inserted. I can fast forward, rewind, pause, fra frame by frame, jump to the end, jump to the start, and I can loop play any of my clips. If I start my loop play here, I choose the in point for loop play, the out point. If I loop that and hit play, it will now loop between those two in and out points.